In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In a lot of murder mystery novels and films, there is a moment, usually towards the end, when a final clue gets revealed. And because of that one clue, that one piece of evidence, the identity of the murderer becomes obvious to the viewer. Easter Sunday is the day when the identity of Jesus Christ finally becomes clear to the apostles, to the faithful women who followed him, and to us. In one sense, Easter was completely unnecessary. If you think about it, the mission of Jesus Christ was completed on Good Friday. The eternal word of God became man so he could become the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. He came to offer his Father a perfect apology, a perfect sacrifice for our sins that we were powerless to make, an infinite act of love and sorrow to atone for our sins, which are of infinite gravity before the all holy God. That was all accomplished on Good Friday. In fact, the words of our Lord and Saviour in St. John's Holy Gospel make this clear. Our Lord cries out, Consummatum est, it is finished. Why then does our Lord rise from the dead? Why does he perform this greatest of all miracles? He rises from the dead for our benefit. Jesus wants to give us that certainty, that vital piece of evidence, that demonstration, which gives us a definitive proof of who he is and what he has accomplished for us. In rising from the dead, our Lord shows he isn't just some prophet. He isn't just some wise man. He told the Jews, that the greatest sign of his divinity will be the sign of Jonah. He would rise from the dead, and so, as the ultimate proof of who, of who he is, he takes up his body three days after his death. And in rising from the dead, Jesus makes it clear that his sacrifice for the sins of the world had been accepted by the Father. Easter Sunday is like the lap of honour which the winner of the race makes for the benefit of the audience, or like the letter in the post that confirms that you passed all your exams, even though you were certain beforehand that you couldn't have failed. With Easter, with Easter Sunday, we know that sins have been dealt with, that no sin is too big to be forgiven, because our Lord took on every sin and offered the sacrifice for them that we were powerless to make. In the Catholic Church, every Sunday is a renewal of that first Easter Sunday, because at every Holy Mass we get a chance to personally thank and embrace Jesus. We join those holy women who kiss at the Lord's feet with love and gratitude. We thank him for saving us from our sins. It is obvious that something so big, so huge, as saving us from the certainty of eternity in the fires of hell, deserves to be commemorated, to be at the constant forefront of our minds and the continual source of joy. So that's why the Holy Catholic Church teaches that weekly Sunday Mass is non-negotiable and that to deliberately miss the weekly thanksgiving to Almighty God is a serious sin. It's an insult. It needs to be brought to confession before Holy Communion can be received. In attending Sunday Mass each week, we pledge another week of our lives in service to Christ, and he, in return, pledges us another week 
with the gift of eternal life. Holy Mass is the joy of the resurrection. Our Lord gives us here something to live for, something to rejoice about, something that nobody, no illness or disaster or demon or tragedy can ever take away from us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.